Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. Latest news in the streets. Join us, sentiment for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So, sir, your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. The whole mantra can't stop, won't stop is like, you gotta be relentless. You gotta have a bit of crazy. You can't take no for an answer. You gotta make it happen. He embodies that. There's only one person. Oh, go on. And I call him Sean. That's Jay-Z. We call each other Sean. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Nobody else could call me Sean. He's and the no, only person who's Sean approved. There's not a single person. Sean Carter is worse. Uh-oh. Oh, man. He's smarter. Hey, tea sippers Happy Friday. I hope you guys are doing good today. So, like I've been saying since last year that we are going into the age of Aquarius, and we are only two months into the new year, into 2024. It is Aquarius season, and it seems like Sean Carter is starting to get exposed more and more like his friend Sean P. Diddy Combs, you know, the two Seans. So I find this whole situation very interesting. Earlier in the year, we received a blind item that went viral on social media where we learned that basically Jay-Z allegedly abused, sold, and then blacklisted Tierra Marie starting at the age of 15. So this went viral earlier this year. I want you guys to go ahead and check out this video right here. I read a very disturbing blind item last week about a young artist who was abused, sold, and blacklisted from the music industry. The original guess for the blind item was that it was allegedly about Ashanti, Irv Gotti, Ray J, and Diddy, and Jennifer Lopez. But you guys have all commented that it makes much more sense if the artist was allegedly Tierra Marie, who was signed to Jay-Z's record label when she was 16 years old. And she was on Love & Hip Hop, and then she just disappeared. So I'm going to reread this blind item with the new names in place, and let's see if this makes more sense. In the wake of the passing of Aaliyah, certain record producers were looking for someone else who could step into her shoes in more ways than one. As I have told you before, Aaliyah was SA'd as a minor by several producers and was treated like a piece of meat to be bought and sold by different producers up until the time that she passed away. A couple of years after she passed away, a fairly large record producer started making some calls about a singer he had working out of his studio. She was 15 and eager and soon different label heads were scouting her and this is allegedly Tierra Marie. When they heard her voice and then saw how she looked, they started scouting her even harder. She was sleeping with one of the producers, the one who made the initial calls. And I don't know who this is, you guys can take a guess. Soon, she was sold to this pseudo corn star and celebrity sibling. You can also take a guess at that one. He loves controlling vulnerable women. It is his specialty. Anyway, he started controlling the career of this singer. He brought her to the attention of this A-plus list rapper and mogul, allegedly Jay-Z. And he signed her to a deal. By the time all of the ink was dry, she was just shy of being legal. But that didn't stop the mogul. He liked to sample the new talent. He was sampling her on a fairly regular basis, but he was also involved with the current a plus list singer who was in his face every day. And this could allegedly be Beyonce. Our brand new signee did fairly well. Her first record sold a decent number of copies and she had some quality singles. The thing is though, that corn star in charge of her career was feuding with the mogul and told the mogul he would not be allowed to hook up with the singer again. I assume he thought the mogul would think she was something special. Apparently not as special as the current a lister because the new signee was dropped and the word was put out on the street. No record deals for her from any label. When someone ignored the edict, they were paid a visit. If the visits were ignored, then other steps were taken. This was a total lockdown of a career that lasted almost a decade. The corn star cost his client her singing career, but he didn't care because he was with so many different women who were all earning for him that she was just a drop in the bucket. Lately, the singer has come back into the spotlight and apparently she is now allowed to record and is starting to make a name for herself again. And again, this is allegedly Tierra Marie, Jay-Z and Beyonce. What do you guys think? 
All right, so you guys just heard that blind item. So then what was very interesting was all of this drama with Nicki Minaj, a.k.a. her coke rant that everybody was talking about on social media. Now, Nicki was throwing a lot of shots at Jay-Z and Beyonce. She had been throwing like little shots in her music. But then once everything went down with Meg Thee Stallion's, you know, his song, basically Nicki went in. Um, she was not here for the nonsense with Jay-Z, Rock Nation, and she blasted them. And then Azealia Banks came out right behind Nicki and basically was confirming a lot of the stuff that Nicki was saying about how Jay-Z did not have her back when she was being abused by Meek Mill and how, you know, Jay-Z and Beyonce no longer fool with her and they're trying to make Megan her replacement. But that wasn't the last time that Nicki name dropped Beyonce because in the song Press Play, Nicki name dropped Beyonce saying, they say, why can't you be Beyonce? Daddy wasn't no businessman. Mama wasn't no business owner. Mm, what an idiot. At this point, people started to put two and two together and realized just how badly Nicki had it for Jay-Z and Beyonce. Well, Azalea Banks finally entered the chat and dropped her two cents on the drama, confirming our speculations that Nicki has beef with the Carters. She went live on Instagram and kicked things off by revealing that Nicki's issues with Jay-Z started because he protected her then boyfriend, Meek Mill, after he put pause on Nikki, and this prevented Nikki from exposing Meek and speaking her truth. Azalea also claimed that Nikki desperately wants to be a Rock Nation girly, and she is still salty because she isn't. Nikki is low key, like, I could just feel that she's low key felt slighted by Jay, just by, just even by his association with Meek Mill, you know, and but she's also at the same time been trying to wiggle her way in. Like, Nikki wants to be a Rock Nation girl, bad. Now, we kind of peeped this tea about her and Meek Mill, especially since there were reports that Rock Nation got her documentary canceled because she was going to speak on Meek Mill and they couldn't have that. A couple of years down the line, Nikki posted a snippet from the documentary where she talked about being in a relationship with a man who used to put paws on her. So when my mother um, would let my father um, be violent with her, and she always brings up the story as a little girl I would come in front of I would stand in front of my mother and go like this and I vowed like that's why I'm like maybe some people would describe me as abrasive or whatever because I vowed from that age no man would ever call me out my name treat me like that and then all of a sudden that was my life Meek Mill caught the shade and he sent a cease and desist letter to Nikki to try to prevent her from talking about the situation. This made Nikki furious, so she flipped out on him on Twitter, saying, you a clown, you do it for likes. Twitter fingers, women scared of men. You your own sister and taped it, spit on her and taped it, kicked me in front of your mother and sent her to the hospital. Sucking Drake's D made you feel tough again. Move on, you can never stand on your own. You was around, you know, see you soon. So according to Azalea, this is the real reason that Nikki was mad. And if you're wondering why she took it out on Megan, Azalea claimed that Nikki was jealous because it's been years since Jay-Z publicly co-signed a female rapper and Nikki was upset that it wasn't her. And on top of that, like it's been years, years, since Jay-Z has co-signs, publicly co-signs, any female rapper. And the fact that it's Megan, who, like, it could be anybody, you know what I mean? It could be, it could be me, you know what I mean? It could be Bad Baby, it could be whoever. The fact that someone, some girl that is not Nicki got Jay-Z's public co-sign, some female rapper that's not Nicki got Jay-Z's public co-sign makes all right, so you guys just saw that video. And then we also can't forget Uncle Ron was out here spilling tea, you know, basically calling out Jay-Z and Beyonce and Puffy and saying that they all had a hand in ruining Biggie Smalls' career, doing things to Beanie Siegel. So the whole situation is crazy, all of the tea that's been coming out recently about Jay-Z. Beyonce and Jay-Z will do anything to destroy anyone who speaks out against them. Okay, I get the threats, but you have to remember one thing. I know your deepest secrets. I know so much about you and what you've done. I know so much on how you got where you are, how you stepped on many people. Beyonce, how you guys ended Carrie Hilson's career because she said something about you. That's how hateful you guys are, how you step on anybody to stay on the top. So remember, 
Your relationship was a business relationship, financial, to get to the top, to be, be to become billionaires. There's no love there. See, what's done in the dark will definitely come in the light. Keep your threats up. I'm here today, and what I got to say, I'm going to say it. So don't, don't, don't make idle threats to me. Because, see, I ain't biggie. Say I ain't Beanie Seagulls. I ain't Freeway. How you, you wrote all of them off the minute they did for you to get you to the top. All of them writing for you. And then the minute you get a little taste of success, you wrote them off. You just totally said, I don't know. Them. Say you don't know me. I dare you. I dare you. Remember, all the receipts, all the proof, the old school footage, I still have it. See, hardly nobody knows, but I'll say it, man. Yeah, Beyonce's on drugs. She's been on them for a long time, and you keep her that way. Y'all wish it what you wish it. To stay on top. But there's one thing about me, bro. I can't be bought. This is Uncle Ron. Just like I know how you guys started, I can put my foot down and make you make it all go away. Promise you. You're playing with the wrong one. All right. See, I just heard Uncle Ron spilling that tea. So now what's even more interesting is that yesterday, MIA is that yesterday rapper M.I.A. went on a huge rant concerning Jay-Z and Rock Nation and basically what has happened to her and her career. And she's been fighting for custody of her son that she has with Benjamin Brockman for a while now. So this entire situation is nuts. I'm going to go ahead and read to you guys what M.I.A. was tweeting yesterday. So she starts off by saying, Biden won't let me see my child. The longest processing is meant to be two months. It's already been that. They're basically saying I have to wait for a Republican to come into office because nine months from now is the election. I'm not allowed to see my child for stealing food at 18 when I was poor, yet our government is okay with my child being with a family convicted for child trafficking and sex cults. Okay, the difference between me and the migrants coming in is that I can't vote and I'm paying U.S. taxes to sit. I'm sorry, America, but your ethics and morals are pretty fucked up on this. I have shown support for Julian for 14 years and have been to the U.S. many times. The only thing different this time is that I called for a ceasefire and spoke out against genocide and ethnic cleansing. Now I'm forced to pick between my child and speaking up for what's right by God. Then somebody says to her, pick your child every time. She replies back and she says, the problem is that your country doesn't think that the mother should even have a choice. Then she says, I'm happy to go to war for my child, just like every mother, but is your monster the same as mine? My first custody battle was in 2013 when my child was four. I was managed by Jay-Z, who ultimately was played by the Brothmans. Be very clear why my math thing record was buried in 2023. I sacrificed my career for my child. They ripped me off and copied my style and gave it to other puppets and shadow banned me on every platform. But it was worth it to save him from the madness of what you know now. So then somebody replies to her and they say, why the fuck did you marry and have kids with someone that closely related to Warner Music Group? I seriously love you as an artist. I think you're incredibly smart, but this shocked me then and still does. Never trust them ever. They lie and they think it's funny to see you angry. Fight smart. She says, I guess the same reason why so many Christians can't tell the difference. Then she says, the day I was severed from my four-year-old, Rock Nation stopped all communication with me and all my emails to Jay-Z asking for help were wiped from my inbox. Mine was broken into, every lap was taken. I was trapped in Brooklyn on an order served that restricted me leaving Brooklyn for 15 years. Aurora James vaccinated my child without my permission. They manipulated my child by lying to a 12-year-old pretending to be his mom. Of course, it's not your own child. You don't care how you can psychologically damage a child with mental games. 
She is Beyonce and Solange's friend. Then somebody says, go to the southern border, cross illegally. Seems Biden is allowing that, but not allowing people to do it legally. She says, only if Republicans promise they will process my papers officially, unlike the Democrats, if they win. Again, they vaccinated him, even after calling me an anti-vaxxer and humiliating me in the press for a good two years, canceling my latest MATA record from all promo and touring, again, sacrificing another LP, yet they still vaccinate him at 12 to get at me. It's the year of the dragon in Chinese New Year, and I'm ready to slay some dragons. Happy New Year. So that is what she had to say. She said a lot, okay? Now, one of the reasons why a lot of people are mixed about this, because one, Rock Nation is a record label. They really don't have anything to do with custody disputes. Um, But if Jay-Z took money, you know, hush money like she's alluding to, then that's definitely wrong. But more about her baby's father. Because I remember when she got with him, a lot of people were really shocked. Because one, he's a billionaire. He is the nephew of Claire and Sarah Boffman. He is the nephew of Claire and he is Sarah Boffman's great nephew. And if you guys don't know, they were tied to the Nixium case and uh, Claire got several years in prison. And this went down about three years ago. They were running like a whole trafficking ring, you know, pimping out women. These billionaires were doing all types of shady shit. Y'all check this out. An heiress to the Seagram's fortune will spend the next seven years behind bars for her role in the Nexium sex cult case. She was sentenced today after pleading guilty to identity theft and immigration offenses. CBS 2's Andrea Grimes reports. I just want my reputation back. Barbara Boucher teared up outside Brooklyn Federal Court after giving one of several victim impact statements inside at the sentencing of Seagram's beverage fortune heiress, Claire Bronfman. A judge sentenced Bronfman to 81 months in prison, nearly seven years, for her role on the executive board of Nexium. I was speechless, and I feel that this was justice served, and I think that Claire will take that very seriously. Nexium was originally billed as a self-help organization founded by Keith Ranieri in Albany in 1998. But the judge pointed out it functioned as a pyramid scheme. And under it, Ranieri later headed up a secret all-female society that essentially operated as a sex cult. The judge said while there's no evidence Bronfman directly participated in the sex operation, she used her wealth and social status to intimidate and pressure Ranieri's critics and dissenters. I think today sends a very, very strong message and hopefully some measure of peace and justice uh, to the victims who suffered at the hands of this very uh, corrupt enterprise. Ranieri was separately convicted of several charges, including sex trafficking. Her attorneys vowed to appeal her sentence. The decision was clearly an abomination. It was outrageous. It was a miscarriage of justice to go three times above the sentencing uh, guidelines. Bronfman did apologize in court to the one victim her charges included, but the judge said he needed to consider her sentence in the context of the other defendants as well, including Ranieri. Outside Brooklyn Federal Court, Andrea Grimes, CBS 2 News. All right, so you guys just saw that clip. So basically, Claire and Sarah's half-brother, Edgar, is Benjamin's father, and he was the CEO of Warner Music Group from 2004 to 2011. Um, He's an occasional songwriter. He helped write Celine Dion's Love to Know You More. So that is why people are kind of like not feeling bad for her, because Because when she got with him and, you know, ended up getting pregnant, people were shocked. Because if you know MIA, her whole stance was basically, you know, going at billionaires. Everything she rapped about is things that him and his family had done. You know, the greed and not looking out for the poor and things like that. So people were very shocked when they got together because of her reputation and the way she rapped. It was like, what the hell? Like, how did this even happen? So a lot of people feel like, you know what? She got with him because he was a billionaire. She thought it was a money grab. And basically, you know, she tried to go dig all the while trying to portray a revolutionary. And it basically backfired on her. So a lot of critics are basically saying, you know, cry me a river. Like you knew what this family was about, but you didn't care. You got with a billionaire. And because of his status and his money, he was able to get custody of the child because he's in a better financial position than she is. Because at that time, Jay-Z was blacklisting her. Her music wasn't being paid, so her money was dwindling. So she's saying that is how she lost custody because the money that Jay-Z would have lost 
from blacklisting her and not playing her music and not letting her perform, basically Benjamin paid Jay-Z off to blackball her. So this whole situation is crazy. I don't put anything past Rock Nation. Um, you know, we've had a lot of people accusing them of being behind the whole Tory Lanez and Megan situation. And Tory Lanez goes to jail. They gave y'all all the facts of the juice of Tory Lanez going to jail and this, that, and the third, and Megan getting arrested and da-da-da-da. Two days after that, I get a call from Rock Nation that says, yo, we heard you're gonna make a statement about what happened, and it'd be in your best interest if you don't make that statement. This court system is not for justice. It's about wins and losses, and they do dirty to do whatever they can. Jay-Z, let me speak to you. He has kids. Rock Nation, yes. because my son refused to sign a Rock yes. Nation yes. I'll deal with you. I don't know how deep that rabbit hole goes, but it's very interesting to see MIA come out after all these years and once again say the same thing that she's been saying literally since 2013. If you guys remember a few years ago, she came out and was going off about her custody drama with Benjamin Brothman. And so that's when the child at that time was four years old. So now we fast forward years later and she's still in the same boat. So the whole situation is very disturbing, but I look forward to reading y'all's comments. How do y'all feel about all of this? How do you feel about, once again, Jay-Z and Rock Nation being called out? First, Uncle Ron, then The Blind Item, then Nicki Minaj, Azealia Banks, and now we have MIA coming out and calling out Jay-Z as well. So go ahead and leave a comment down below. I look forward to reading your comments. Make sure you guys hit this video with a like. Feel free to share the video. And most importantly, make sure you still subscribe to the channel. And I'll talk to y'all later. Deuces. If you want the latest news in the streets, join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sir, your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe.